Hey guys, how's it going? Burstfy here, bringing you another video. And today this is going to be a Kha'Zix guide specifically focused on bronze to gold players um, that want to get basically uh, platinum, right? That's the play. Uh, so I've personally used this uh, this method in this guide recently to get gold one. Um, you know, basically, what's the date today? June. So yeah, in, in June 2019, got to gold one. Uh, in promos to plat, you guys can easily get to platinum um, if you're just good at the game, right? If you're not not me. So I, I believe this guide can get you to platinum. Uh, platinum four at least. So runes. Um, the runes we're running here are going to be domination uh, alongside inspiration. We're going to be going electrocute. Uh, this is really, really good because with your passive, um, it allows you to passive and then one ability and proc electrocute. So it procs really, really easily and quite high damage. Uh, sudden Impact is really good. You can use that with your ultimate and your E um, to give you big damage. Uh, zombie Ward is super good um, because it basically means you can kill enemy wards and get free AD for it, uh, which is really nice. And it gives you more of an incentive too because when you get Dusk Blade and Sweeper, you're going to be killing a lot of wards and not really wanting to sometimes because if they're disabled, they can't see anything. But if you kill those wards, you get free AD. Um, so that's really, really good. Up to like a max of, of 10 wards. Um, and then Ravenous Hunter is good. It means basically unique kills give you healing. So this is really, really nice uh, for your like Q, your 1v1 isolated, but also like neutral objectives, just healing. So this is the best uh, domination. And then uh, Inspiration Magical Footwear means you don't have to buy boots, which means you can accelerate your Dust Blade, which is really nice. And Cosmic Insight, obviously, right? It gives you Flash uh -uh. and, you know, CDR. <clears throat> Use your summoners more often. It's just really, really good. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, in terms of abilities, uh, I think that's next, right? Yeah, ability threat. So your passive is unseen threat, and when you lead, when you are not visible to the enemy, so you're in a bush, or even if you're just, you know, if I'm just standing here and the enemy can't see me, you gain unseen threat, and it's indicated by this thing here. Basically, makes your next auto attack slow the enemy and do bonus damage. Then you have taste their fear, the Q. This can be what you max first. Uh, this is basically just your, your basic ability, used as to clear. Um, the damage is much higher isolated, so when you clear jungle camps, you know, you want to kill the little ones first to get the isolated damage for the Q. Uh, and, but you always want to order before your Q uh, when, you, when you use it, because um, the order will apply the slow and it's shorter range than the Q even after the evolve. So always order before Q. Uh, w, Void Spike, is going to be a line missile of damage. Um, if it hits uh, someone and you're close to them, it will heal you. So essentially what that means is like if I'm standing here and I hit this scuttle crab, I don't heal. But if I was standing right next to it, super close, then you do heal. So you want to be really close when you're using that. Uh, and your E is just a leap. So it's pretty simple. You, you literally just leap through the air. Um, oh, I should probably demonstrate these. Um, level up. Cool. And then... Your next, so yeah, so Q, E, and then W. So then your R makes you go invisible, and then you do auto attack damage, increase to champion, so it gives you unseen threat. It doesn't actually increase your auto attack, but it gives you unseen threat if you're not like under a tower. So you wanna use that. You can use that with Dust Blade as well, and with um, Sudden Impact. In terms of the upgrades, um, you want to upgrade your Q first, because Kha'Zix has a weak early game, and if you upgrade your Q, it means you can farm faster and take dragons faster, and also like helps you 1v1, and will help you get to level 11. When you get to level 11, you want to upgrade your R. This will give you an extra charge of um, Void Assault. Instead of 2, it'll give you 3 charges, which you can use, and the stealth lasts longer, so this is really, really good. And then, finally, uh, you want to do your E or your W. So, I evolve E usually, because you want to be getting kills, and then you know jumping out so getting like resets and it's also a lot of fun that's where you can do like the bunny hops and things that you see um w is more like the whole enemy team is super tanky and you're never going to get like a, a kill at the start of the fight like the, the whole fight is just going to be you like doing a bit of damage but no one will die and then they'll all die so maybe if you have like a you know like a one-shot combo or everyone's just grouping so they have like a Cho'Gath and a Malphite and all that stuff and you're just not going to use it. If you're not going to get the resets, then you go W. But generally I just go E. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So you max uh, Q first, W second, E third obviously, putting a point into R at level 6, 11, and 16, so every level you can. Um, what else you got? Items. Okay, so items, really, really simple. You start off 
with Hunter's Talisman, Refill, and Ward. Hunter's Talisman means that you'll be able to heal a lot from AoE camps using your W, such as Chickens and uh, Krugs. You actually can't realistically farm the jungle with Machete, so this is not an option. You have to go to Talisman. Uh, refill is better than regular pots or uh, Pink Ward because you need the health, um, but you don't want to like waste a lot of gold on health because you'll have to keep getting health every time you base. So Refill is super, super nice. Then Moby Boots, you obviously can't buy them early because we've taken... Um, Magical footwear, so you need to you know wait on that. But Moby boots are really really good. If you can, what you can do is you can use your ult from you know out of combat, and then with the Moby boots you'll be super super fast, and you can like go really fast. So especially level eleven, um, that's that's going to be the play. Uh, you usually don't want to go Moby boots until you have the two core items, which is the Red Warrior and the Dust Blade. Um, so Red Warrior is you know, no brainer, right? It's it's your jungle item. It's super good gold value. It gives you healthier clears. Uh, gives you you know CDR, AD, and life steal in jungle. It's super super good. Um, so that's not even a question. Red smite is better than blue because it helps your uh, assassination potential and also your one v one potential. Obviously by you know reducing damage uh, with the smite and also um, allowing you to use your unseen threat in combination with your uh, dust blade in combination with your ultimate, so it's it's super super important to use the red smite. It'll also help you deal with those tanks as well that will do quite a lot of damage to you because you're very very squishy. So always red smite uh, is better than blue. Dust blade is super good. Um, the cool thing with dust blade is the passive, which basically is the unseen. Um, it will allow you to kill enemy wards. So if there's a ward in this bush and I run past it, my dust blade will activate and I can kill the ward, giving me a stack of zombie ward and obviously the ward kill and dust blade gives you a lot of damage on your passive with the ultimate so you can use an ultimate auto attack ultimate auto attack and you'll it'll, it'll apply the uh, the dust blade passive um of night stalker so after being unseen for at least one second your next basic attack against an enemy champion deals uh, bonus physical damage and slows them right and there's uh no there's no cooldown that's the thing um there is no cooldown so what you can do is you can literally, um, let me just refresh my ability, uh, okay. So you can literally like, you know, use an, so like this. So imagine if this was an enemy champ, uh, you can go like this. You can go auto, unseen threat, Q, then you R, and you get unseen threat again, auto Q, unseen threat again, auto Q, right? And it's super, super good. And it applies, and as long as you're invisible for like a long time, because the problem is, if you're just invisible like this, like, that's not long enough. But if you're invisible like this for over a second, it will give you Dustblade proc. Um, which is really, really nice. So, that's why Dustblade is super, super good. Um, yes. Next is... Okay, so if they have any healing at all, so a Mundo, or even just an ADC that, that life steals a lot, like maybe, um... You know, just, just a basic one would be, you know, like Lucian, right? Uh, any, this is almost always good, but especially if they have healing, um, or like a Zac jungle or whatever, you get Executionist. And then Hex Drinker, if they have any sort of like big AP damage, so like a brand support or like a, an Orianna or even just a, a fed Malphite, right? Anything that's going to deal like considerable AP damage up to about maybe, uh, just anything really. If they have any AP on their team, then you should probably get a Hex Drinker, unless it's like a Lulu support and that's the only AP. Um... Then you go Edge of Night. This is really, really nice. You can activate it um, while you're in your ult. So I, I could actually, I think I should probably just show you that. Uh, so, whoops, what am I doing? Sorry. Uh, okay, Ed Gold. So what you can do is obviously like you channel for one second, it gives you a veil, right? But the cool thing with that is um, you can actually channel during your ult, okay? So, ult, channel, and then you come out of ult and you have the, the full thing. So I ulted first, R, then channel, and by the time you finish your evolved R, it's, um, it's channeled. So, yeah, that's the play. Even the regular R, actually, is still over one second. So you, even without evolved R, R, uh, edge of night, and there you go. So that's why it's really, really good. It basically just means you jump in and something like, you know, Oh, they've got a TF with gold card? Doesn't matter. Oh, they've got a brand? Doesn't matter, right? So, it's a really, really good item. Uh, gives you health and AD as well, and lethality, of course. Uh, next, you'll go Mortal Reminder. Uh, only go Mortal Reminder if Execution is calling, okay? Because Mortal Reminder is worse than Lord Dominic's against tanks, 
but it's super good with this because you've already spent 800 gold so it actually makes this cheaper relatively right because you're not buying this for the mortal you're not buying the executioners for the mortal you're just buying executioners because it's good which makes mortal reminder as an item 2000 gold and lord doms is 28 if lord dominix was 2000 as well so if they both build out of the executioners you would actually go this 90 percent of the time um, because this is just a worse item than this. The only reason this is better is because of the Executioners. So if you don't buy Executioners because they don't have a lot of healing, or maybe they do, but they're just insta-dying, they've got like no tanks or anything, then you just go Lord Dominix. Um, yes. And then Mora Mamorius, same thing. If you have Hex Drinker, Mora Mamorius. If no, no Hex Drinker, just go GA, right? In that order. So let's imagine you don't have an Executioners. You'll go Mobis, uh, Warrior, Dustblade, Edge of Night, then no executioners, so you'd actually just go straight into the Moor, and then the Lord Dominix, right? Let's say you don't have either, then you would go uh, GA, Lord Dominix, and if you had the uh, executioners but not Hexdrinker, you would go Mortal, and then um, GA, right? So it's in order. So if you copy this build in order, it'll help you memorize it, okay? But you almost always just want to buy the next one across. The only difference is the boots. You don't want to buy boots until you have these first two items. Uh, and even then, if you're not level 11, right, so you're like, you're super fed, so you get these two items, and you're not level 11, buy the Executioners first, and even the Hex Drinker if you're super fed. Because the Mobis are only good when you have R Evolve, okay? Because early game, you're not ganking, okay? And this, I guess this is the next um, portion of this, early game. So, early game, mid game, late game. In the early game, your job is to get to level 6. That's literally it. You don't gank. You don't um, 1v1, right? Except in specific matchups. Like, for example, you can 1v1 a Kane if he doesn't take Dark Harvest, but almost all Kanes are taking Dark Harvest now, so you essentially can't 1v1 even Kane. But there are certain matchups where you can 1v1, but for the most time, you want to be vertical jungling or mirroring. So, for example, you know, if, if enemy jungle is like a Sejuani and they're on their red, you want to be on your red. If they're on their blue, you want to be on your blue, okay? Scuttle Crab. Same thing. If they go for bot scuttle crab, you go for top scuttle crab. You don't contest. You're avoiding. You're scaling. You're essentially a master Yi in the early game. The only time, like obviously, basic jungle rules apply. So if your top is fighting like one v one, and then the enemy jungle shows up and you're doing like scuttle, you stop the scuttle and help. Obviously, but if they're just fighting one v one and you don't really think you're gonna, you're gonna look at that and go, I can't really help. Like, you just don't gank, because Kha'Zix's damage is so low, his usefulness, is so, his utility is so low, and his health is so low. So most of the time, if you try to help in, like, a 1v1, the guy will stop killing your top laner and just one-shot you, and you'll do no damage and, and nothing, and it'll be useless. So levels pre-level 6, do nothing. When you get level 6, you can start 1v1-ing because you let the Q evolve, but the reason we evolve Q is to get level 11. So once you evolve... Um, once you get to level 6, all you want to be doing is now, okay, now we can do Dragon, now we can do Herald, now when we invade, we can actually clear faster and get and get out of there. So all the Q Evolve, all that level 6 does, is it makes you farm faster. So now you can start heading into River. But you still don't gank, you still don't fight. You counter gank, and you can help out your teammates if they start fighting, and obviously, like, if someone's super low, you can clean up and get a free kill. But you don't want to do anything proactive. You don't want to be like, hey, this lane's 50-50, let me gank. Like, that's not what you do. You go, I'm going to take chickens. Um, when you get level 11, this is the strongest point of Kha'Zix. And throughout the course of the game, you'll just get weaker, relatively. Okay? So, level 11. Um, let me just jump back to base. Okay, so level 11. Your build should be something along the lines of, like, this. Right? Maybe you've got, like, this as well if you're fed. Right? You'll, you'll almost never have this because you won't, you won't be fed enough, but this is, this is the play. Also, one thing I forgot to add to this build is the elixir is obviously the red elixir. I just forgot to add it. Um, so yeah, my bad. I guess I just throw it like in here next to, in the new block. I'll do that after this game. Um, but yeah, so red elixir is going to be the elixir, but yeah, you probably have this shit and maybe like a red elixir if it's, it's going to be like an infernal fight or something, but most of the time, no, right? Most of the time you're just going to be happy with, um, it's going to be... Oh yeah, that's the bot. You're just going to be happy with this. So this is your build. This is the strongest point in the game. And basically what you want to look to do is now every scuttle is yours. If you lose a scuttle, you've done something wrong. Because even without priority, what you can do is you can... Um, let me just TP back here. Okay, so like with scuttle, for example, you could be here. Enemy sedge is like here. And then enemy lane is pushed up. And they're like, you know, they're winning. They have priority here. They have priority here. You can come in, take the scuttle, and then just jump out. And if you get into any sort of fights, you literally have three 
uh, two second thing. So you have six seconds of complete stealth with the scuttle crab. You can just do something very simple like this, where you just run to the back of the pit and jump out. Right? Obviously one of the evolved E at this point, it doesn't matter. You can solo dragon without any priority at all. You can literally just solo this dragon and get it just completely like done or whatever, do whatever you want with it, and then just jump out the back of the pit. And no one will be able to tell you otherwise. Like this is Kazakhstan's strongest point. The other thing you can do is you can literally just start using your dust blade to um, like deny vision and things and just sit in like this bush. You come in here. Oh, the, the dust blade pops. If there's like a ward in here, the dust blade like pings and it makes a pink thing above your head. Oh, let me just take that free ward and now I've got an extra 1.2 AD just for free for doing absolutely nothing. And now if you sit in this bush, they have to eventually walk up to CS. You can literally ult in. Auto attack, Q, like you can just destroy them and they'll have to flash. And you can even kill them if they flash because you have jump, right? Um, and like your flash, obviously, because you haven't really been ganking the early games, so you should have your flash. And then you just start, you know, destroying their jungle. Like literally, there's, there's nothing they can do. Um, there, there's, there's very little they can do to stop you just straight up just stealing all the shit. Also, tip, when you counter jungle the Krogs, you don't have to kill the, all the ones because they take way too long and don't give that much gold. You just want to clear them, get out, right? Next, okay, let's go, you know, grab this shit, right? And this might seem odd because I have the E of all, but even without the E of all, this is actually realistically the sort of pace that you get through this shit. Like, obviously level 18 as well. Um, but realistically, like, this is, this is how you get through. Oh, I know what I should have done. I should have, like, leveled up as I was talking about each, each aspect. Um, oh well. Um, but yeah, you literally just do all this shit, you know, just and just keep clearing like a circle. This whole map is just yours. Everything is yours. You see a champ, okay, let me just 1v1 him real quick. One shot everyone with the dust blade and they're all dead. Okay, this is just mid game. This is the best part. This is why you pick Kha'Zix. Like, this is the fun bit. Um, and a lot of players, what they'll do is if, if they get lots of like kills and assists early, then they'll actually skip the Q evolve and just go like R. R and E evolve because you don't need the, the the point of Q is just to get to R to get to level 11 faster. That's the whole point of Q at level six. So if you're already super high level or you just want to be super greedy, um, then you you don't evolve the Q. But evolving the Q is super nice. And then you get level 16 and oh my god, it feels good to be a gangster. Like seriously, everybody dies. Every single person will die at level 16. Um, the, the only reason, and you might say, oh, well, then why isn't late game the best of Kha'Zix? Well, late game is the best of Kha'Zix, but it'll be the least um, impactful, right? Because uh, the problem with playing Kha'Zix in the late game is, well, very simply, uh, that the situations that you'll find yourself are not open. It's not, oh, let me try and find a pick. Let me, you know, let me just hide in this bush real quick. You know, let me just deny vision and hide in this bush real quick. Oh, you want to come, like, just walk into your own jungle? One shot, dead. And then you just, like, whatever. Um, those don't happen, because late game it's team fights, it's grouping, it's split push. In the late game, you group, you do not go side lane. Uh, even though your teammates might ping you to go side lane, you never go side lane because of neutral objectives. If there are no neutral objectives, yes, right? You see an ADC like farming, you know, even here or something, right? And you've got a teammate here and you can see enemies are like here and here. You could just walk straight in here, try and kill the, the ADC. She probably has flash with GA or Zonyas, and then just go out. So basically your job is just to apply pressure to the the squishies right the adc the mid laner a squishy jungle if they have one like a an elise or, or a nidalee or something um your job is just to apply pressure you're not you're not actually going to be useful but you have threat because this is where you're your strongest you have your e reset so you can just start fucking bunny hopping everywhere you want and it's it's actually um the thing with the e reset is it's faster than uh than the practice tool because the practice tool i'm spamming e as fast as possible and you're jumping this fast okay in a game it's instant it's literally instant you can jump without even touching the ground and that's the best part and i think for that sort of shit just watch um just watch a bunch of montages like kazakh's montages and things like this uh they're great right um let's see late game mid game i've covered everything so yeah that's the guide i hope this gets you to this will definitely if you play kazakh's in the way that I've said with the build and the runes and the playstyle, and you are not uh, at least Platinum 4, you are doing something wrong. It is not the guide, it is not the elo, it is not the meta. You are doing something wrong. Because people have been getting Kha'Zix to at least, I, I say Challenger, but at least Diamond 2 for since he was released. Like, literally since he was released. 
which means if you're doing this sort of thing, which is, you know, the correct way to play him, at least at low elo, and you're not getting to at least Platinum 4, then you are the problem, and you haven't played enough Kha'Zix games. Um, he is quite slow in terms of, like, learning, and he's quite difficult to play, because you have to know his damage, you have to know all his combos. Um, that being said, if you invest maybe, like, 100 games into Kha'Zix, then you'll just start 1v5ing, especially, like, even in gold, you can 1v5, but especially in silver, like, if you're bronze, silver, iron, this is free load. But even if you're gold, even if you're platinum, you should be able to just 1v9 uh, these games with Kha'Zix. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Burstfire. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.